My message today comes from Exodus chapter 1. And our big idea for the week is this. We can obey God above anyone else. We can, obe- we can obey God above anyone else. And I'm using as my title today, Op- Optimistic Midwives. Not desperate housewives, but optimistic midwives. You see, obedience rewards those who fear the Lord. Instead of reading the scriptures, I just, I just want to tell you this story. Is that all right if we just do story time? So as we begin the book of Exodus, Joshua, who had been helping lead Egypt, who had helped govern with Pharaoh, has died. And you remember during the famine, Joseph got all of his family to come and live in this place called Goshen, which, is a, which was a very plush pasture land. They multiplied. Joseph and all of his brothers, multiplication. I mean, years have passed and, and that family has grown. In fact, chapter 1 said they outnumbered the Egyptians. So now here in Exodus chapter 1, the Pharaoh has somewhat of a dilemma. He's become a little bit fearful of the Israelites. Again, Joshua, Joseph is gone. All of his brothers are gone. Now there's a new king. There's a new Pharaoh. In fact, pharaohs considered themselves more than a king. They, they, they viewed themselves as gods. So this new pharaoh, outnumbered by the Israelites, was worried that should there be a war, that the Israelites would turn against them. So he started making the Israelites work harder. And harder, and harder, and harder, and harder. Made life stressful for them. But you know what? The harder they worked, the more babies they had. That's the story. And so Pharaoh had this big idea that he would introduce abortion, a genocide. He'd start getting rid of all the baby boys. And so Pharaoh, in his high position, in his lofty place of ruling, brought in two midwives, two maids, two slaves, if you will. Shifra and Pua. Shifra and Pua. Interesting names, right? Can you say Shifra? Pua. Two ladies, two simple ladies. They're called in before the throne. Midwives, mind you. And Pharaoh says, I want you to take out all the baby boys. I want you to take out all the baby boys Because I've got a problem I need to take care of. Shifra and Pua, we're still talking about them today. Because when they left that meeting, they left shaking their heads. No, we not. No, we not. We're not going. The Bible says they feared God more than man. Even this big dog Pharaoh, they feared God more than man. They weren't going to do what Pharaoh said to do because they weren't going to go against Almighty God. These ladies, you see, they knew God and they knew Pharaoh, but they knew God 
was a whole lot bigger deal. They left that meeting choosing to honor God. And like I said, we're still trying to pronounce their names today. We're still talking about, talking about them today. Because when you honor God, He's going to honor you. He's honoring these two midwives who had nothing. Maids, slaves. You see, when you were a midwife in the day, you didn't even have a house. You didn't have a family. You served at the mercy of whoever was pregnant. You lived with them. But you know what the Bible says? Go ahead and read it. God blessed them with houses. Everybody say houses and families. That means Shifra got married and had babies and they built houses and they had babies and they built houses. Pura had got married no longer made, no longer had a, 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 no longer had to live by herself and make do for herself. She had a man in her life now. And only that she had children and they built houses. God blessed them. And again, we're talking about them today. Where are you at on this thing of fearing God? That's the real challenge for us today. Do you, find, do you find yourself intimidated by man, by man? Do you find yourself wanting to people, please? Hey, y'all, I got my hand up in the air. I'm a pastor. I always got to be the nice guy, I guess. It's hard. It's hard. Shucks, I was uncomfortable wearing this T-shirt today because I was afraid of what you might think. What is that? Well, the Lord got on to me this morning. Good. John chapter 12 talked about the rulers who, who wanted the approval of man over God. And I said, Lord Jesus, help me. Not only that, I'm getting old and everything's sagging. And so... It's a humbling thing for me to be in this t-shirt today. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Seriously, though. Where you at on honoring God and His instructions? You know, I, I'm concerned that too much of the time we just live our day and we don't give God a moment's thought. And we do our deal. We do our thing. We run our lives. We order our lives. We govern our own lives. When Jesus wants to do that for us. A few weeks ago, I shared the message about the bike and the hot air balloon. Choosing to do what's familiar, I found ends up making me stressful. Choosing to trust myself, hello, that's the easy thing. I'm going to do what I think I ought to do. But then trusting God sometimes puts me in a situation where I might feel uncomfortable, but there's always peace on the other side of that. I mean, there's, here's some things about obedience, okay? Obedience doesn't always feel right, doesn't always seem right. Obedience is humbling. Obedience, but obedience is wisdom. The smartest thing you can do is do what God says to do. We've got a book. How many of you own a Bible? Bless God. We got a book of instructions on how to do life and we don't trust it. We keep, we keep doing our own thing. Do 
doing your own thing. You know what that is? That will create a pain cycle. Did you know that? Just doing your own thing, doing the same old, same old, whatever you trust or whatever you think is right, that can create a pain cycle. But the peace cycle, that's what you want. That comes from doing what God says to do. And it starts at salvation. There's some of you here today, you've never opened your heart up to Jesus. God has life for you. God has real life for you. God has peace for you. A peace that will pass all understanding. He has that for you, but you've got to first open your heart up to him. Starts there. And then for the child of God, come on Christians. Why ain't we trusting that book? Why do we still choose to do our own thing? The promise is peace. Listen, I understand obedience doesn't always mean life's going to be easy. Don't you know Shifra and Pua, the pressure was on. I mean, they had just heard from Pharaoh. The pressure was on to honor the king, to honor Pharaoh. It wasn't easy for them to do what they knew God wanted them to do. But God blessed them, and God honored them. When it comes to obedience, I think one of the things we need to look at, one of the things we need to think about is the consequences of disobedience. Obedience Is reward. Not always easy, but it's reward. There's a cost to obedience, but the result is reward. Disobedience will cost you, and the result is death and destruction. It will cost you your life, your soul. Disobedience of course, is you doing your own thing, you ignoring the Word of God, the instruction of God, and you choosing to go it your way. You know what that is? That's rebellion. The Bible says rebellion is as witchcraft. Curses come with witchcraft. Homosexuality is an act of rebellion. There's curses that come with that. You see it all around us. This whole transgender thing, it's an act of rebellion. The curses are obvious. Abortion, hello, Pharaoh. It's an act of rebellion. Hello, America. And with rebellion comes curses. What about the rebellion right here in the church house? You know, living together is an act of rebellion. Sex outside of marriage is an act of rebellion. Adultery is an act of rebellion. Pornography is an act of rebellion. Divorce is an act of rebellion. What else? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hmm. So how you doing? You choosing to trust God? Are you more comfortable with trusting yourself? You know, I haven't lived my life perfectly, but I'll be honest with you. There are two things that I chose to do to honor God as a teenager, and I believe I'm still reaping the blessings of those two simple things. Number one, I obeyed my parents. I didn't marry Paula until I got my daddy's blessing. I was 22, 
23. I honored my mom and dad. My dad didn't like Paul at first. <laughs> at first. Then they got really close. By the way, I... Paula must have did a slam-up job last week because I already had people tell me that I just need to take a month off and just let her preach. I know she does a good job preaching at home, so why not here? <laughs> Two things. I made a decision to honor my parents, and I made a decision to save myself from marriage no sex before marriage and I promise you I'm still reaping the benefits of those two simple decisions that I made I'm often reminded thank you God thank you God for helping me honoring my parents Obeying my parents, that was pretty easy. My mom and dad, great folks, loved the Lord, seen Jesus in them. Wasn't hard to do. But saving myself from marriage, there were times when I found myself in some very testy situations. But by God's grace, He delivered me. Now, one of the things that I think was key for me when it came to being able to walk, walk away from those very tempting situations was somehow early on I took on a fear a holy reverence for the living God and it, had, and it has saved me I'm telling you from a lot of junk I don't know what my parents did. I don't know what the church did where I grew up. But somewhere along the line, I caught it. This fear of God. And it saved me. It helped me to walk away. From so many things. Teenagers, I believe what you need. And everybody in the house of that matter, we need this fear of this holy reverence for Almighty God. We need that. Listen, wisdom, the beginning, fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to be smart? Do what God says, and what helps you with that is a fear for Almighty God. I want to do an invitation here a bit, here in a bit, and I want to impart the spirit of wisdom to our teenagers. Mom and dads, I want you to help me. I asked the Lord that question. I said, Lord, I, this fear of God, this healthy, reverent fear that I have for you, Lord, is this something I can give to others? And he led me to that passage where Moses laid his hands on Joshua and he, re, and he received the spirit of wisdom Right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Moses just laid his hands on Joshua, and Joshua received this holy reverence for Almighty God. We're going to pray that here in a little bit. And we're going to believe God to do some transferring, some impartation. Is that all right? I don't know that I've ever done that before. But it was one of the things that kept me, that protected me, that shielded me, this fear of God. And I want to give that to whoever wants it this morning. Can't give something you don't have. I think I got it. And I believe the Lord has given me permission to pray that and to pass that on. I don't know where I'm at in the message. There's three things I want to leave with you today. What's the first one? Obedience begins with the fear of the Lord. We talked about that. Shifra and Pua. 
We're still talking about them today because they had a fear of Almighty God. Number two, obedience results in blessings. Again, God blessed Shifra and Pura with houses and families. Listen, it's not always easy to be obedient, but there is reward. And then number three, obedience facilitates God's will. You want God's will in your life? You do what He says. You do what He says. Anybody want to say amen to that? If you want the will of God in your life, then you do what He says. Romans 12 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, which is your reasonable act of service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You want God's will in your life? You trust Him. You place your trust in Him. Which leads me to this. Last week, I guess it was last Sunday at the conference, I just asked the Lord, Lord, why am I struggling to trust you? Lord, why am I struggling to trust you? And immediately in my spirit, I heard these words. Because you're too busy trusting yourself. Mm. I said, Lord, how do I fix that? And he said, when you go home, wash your wife's feet and pray for her. And wash John and Nathaniel's feet and pray for them. Okay. See, obedience is humbling, doesn't always make sense. I mean, think about the guy who was blind and Jesus spit in the dirt and made mud and put it on his eyes and said, go wash in the sacred pool. Didn't make sense to him. But it was the smartest thing he could have done. Right? And he washes and he sees. So the Lord gave me some instructions. Humbling. Monday night. Sunday night. It was late when we got home. Monday night for our devotion. I read John 13 where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. And I had a pan of water. I don't know what Paula was thinking. I don't know what John and Nathaniel were thinking. But then it happened. I went to my wife and I prayed for her. I asked her how she wanted me to pray for her and then I washed her feet. I went to John and Nathaniel, asked them how I could pray for them, and I washed their feet. It was a holy moment at my house last Monday night. There was weeping, it was beautiful. I can't explain it. I just did what God said to do. And now I'm trusting that He's going to help me trust. Right? I'm trusting that He's going to help me trust. Well, I've preached longer than I intended to. I called Enoch back 30 minutes ago because I thought I was going to give the invitation then, but I needed you to hear a few things. Obedience. Responding to the instructions of the Lord is the best thing you can do. Life is complicated. This world is fallen. It's hard. We live in a complicated world. But Jesus knows how to get us through. Jesus knows how to get you through. I was thinking about the Israelites. I taught on that Wednesday night. They left Egypt, the place of slavery, with a dream in their hearts for a better land. But they weren't going to get there without God. Right? Red Sea. Remember, they had got to the Red Sea. The the Egyptians were behind them. The Red Red Sea was in front of them, behind them. The Egyptians. And Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of our God. God instructed them to hold up his staff. And what happened? The waters opened up. And they walked across on dry ground. Wow. 
They weren't going to get past that river without God. And then in the desert, they needed water. God said, speak to the rock. Hey, they, got, they got snake spit, spit, uh, bit, spit, knit, bit. Same thing. God said, put up a brass serpent and look to it and you'll be healed. Didn't make sense, but it worked. You're not going to get to the other side of your dreams without God's help. What's he telling you to do today? What word? What instruction? What is, what is it that you've been ignoring and avoiding for so long? God's got something beautiful for you on the other side of obedience, I promise you. Just need to trust Him. Won't you stand with me?